Well, hello, folks. In order to understand this issue of uh, what's the quality of the um, AC output of the um, Predator 3500 or any other, actually, um, inverter, we do need a little bit of electrical knowledge, and that's what I'm going to give you is just a tiny little bit. Now, for those of you who already have, you know, advanced knowledge of this kind of stuff, who uh, often complain about my videos having too much upfront stuff that uh, supposedly everyone knows. Um, just jump to the last couple of minutes of this video and you'll know uh, basically uh, why this uh, signal, not signal, the AC coming out of this thing is pretty good and what that means. So for the rest of us, we're going to look at this first. Um, What's DC, direct current? That's what you get out of your battery. The electrons always flow from negative to positive. Uh, some places will tell you current flow goes the other way. No, electrons go from negative to positive. And that's what I'm showing you in this graph right here. And to give you some of the lettering so you'll understand it going forward, constant DC pressure and flow. The E is stands for electromotive force, otherwise known as voltage. Most people just call it voltage using the letter V. But I prefer the letter E um, because when I um, teach the basic electronics to the kids in my kids' tricity classes, the E fits in the Ohm's Law triangle better. It uh, That way you can go through the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, and then you move down in the triangle and so on. That's why. So E stands for electromotive force so or voltage. The I stands for the intensity of the current flow. The uh, Actually the number of uh, electrons moving past a point in a particular length of time. Uh, but we just call it amperes. Um, so the amperes or the flow or the intensity is the I. Sorry. Okay, so in DC, the the flow always goes from negative to positive, um, and the voltage, in this case, I'm showing you a uh, 12 volt. Uh, on an oscilloscope, uh, I would see that either above or below the zero reference line as just a straight line. There wouldn't be any little arrows on it. So that's what I'd see on an oscilloscope. Um, and I will need to know this a little bit later on, so keep that in mind. That's a um, DC direct current because it goes directly from the negative to the positive. On the other hand, AC alternating, the um, voltage or the pressure to push the electrons or the current, the I, uh, oscillates it moves back and forth uh, you can see it here the orange or the uh, purple part on the left I'm starting to uh, generate uh, current flow by increasing uh, voltage or pressure or E and it goes up to some maximum and then slowly smoothly moves back down to the zero reference you can see I have zero E and zero I at that point and then it reverses. The voltage is reversed. So instead of having a positive on the left and a negative on the right, now I switch them around. So that causes the electrons to come back, go the other direction. That is, in this case, it's going left, the little blue arrow. And it eventually reaches some maximum voltage, resulting in maximum current. Um, and then it slowly goes back down to zero once again turn it around. Voltage pressure pushes the electrons the other direction. Right? That's why I have my little blue arrows going one way, then the other, then other way, other. So what I have here then for our purposes is that this um, oscillation or frequency um, changes 60 times per second or 60 cycles per second CPS. If you're really old nowadays we always have to call this Hertz has nothing to do with the car rental. Um, so that's what comes out of our wall uh, plug here in the United States with an amplitude of around 120 volts. Right? So that's AC. And that's what we want out of our um, inverters. Actually, out of our 3500 generator inverter. But here's where it gets just a little bit more confusing. Um, 
is, are these AC signals alternating current signals? Well, it depends on who you ask. Uh, the other uh, upper one is definitely an alternating because it's going above and below the zero reference line. Uh, but is it sinusoidal? You know, like sinuous, like a snake? Oh, no, absolutely not. Well, how about the one below that? Um, I've got a thing, a voltage above the zero reference line, which means I've got current flow in one direction. In this case, constantly, because the voltage, the push resulting in the current doesn't change over the time of that uh, particular little box there, right? Technically, we call this a square wave, not a sine wave because it, it is an AC in the hardest, longest stretch of the imagination <laughs> because it's uh, you know positive and then it's negative and then it's positive and then it's negative. So these things can get very, very confusing. But one thing to remember as I go forward on this is that the bottom one does have um, kind of the characteristics of a um, sinusoidal wave except it's squared off right um, been dealing with these in uh, transmission systems since the 1960s um, in t-type carrier where we, these little squares represent pieces of information bits of information but this is a power system so um, most of the time we don't want that kind of thing even though it's technically versions of uh, alternating current right so it's, for our purposes in this little exposition, these are deviant AC behaviors. So let's move into um, the quality issue, get a little deeper into it, the quality of the AC. And we need to know basically what the uh, generator inverter's purpose is, and that is to transfer power, right? Actually from the gasoline, the power stored in the gasoline to uh, convert it into electrical power. So we need to know a couple of different things. Um, for this particular uh, operation, we need a formula. I know it's kind of scary, huh? but it's easy as pie. Power in watts is equal to the amount of current flowing, the intensity, times the voltage that is pushing it. So it's easy as pie because our ultimate purpose is to transfer that power out to something that we have plugged in to our um, generator inverter. And to do that, we usually use just DC because it's really easy. Direct current always goes in one direction. So if I have um, 10 volts pushing 10 amps, I have generated or used up, depending on where you are, um, 100 watts because it's 10 times 10. But in AC uh, signals, it's not quite that clean because if you look at it, sometimes there's no power being pushed by voltage at all, right? Down at the zero reference. And sometimes there's a whole bunch all the way up to 10 volts pushing 10 amps, but it's not there all the time. So the equivalent of DC in an AC is uh, known as uh, RMS, root mean squared. Um, but what we often just call that is uh, how effective is it compared to DC? And the effectiveness value is actually 7.07. Um, .07. So instead of having um, 100 watts being transferred from the uh, generator inverter, I really only have 70.7 .7 watts. And that's because the AC is not on all the time and it's not off all the time. Right. One more piece of information that we're going to put to use here pretty soon. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some of the folks um, watching this that are not familiar with uh, these kind of power systems would ask the uh, logical question. Well, if uh, the AC is not as efficient, if you will, of transferring power, well, why don't we just use DC? Well, there's a long history of that. Um, AC is capable of being changed. The voltage and free, uh, voltage and um, amperage uh, are changed by something as simple as a transformer. 
So there's a long history of it. We're going to use AC. It's what comes out of the wall. It's what all of your appliances work on. So we've got to stick with that. So the output wave of form is a very important. It needs to be sinusoidal. It needs to have a, uh, the 120 volt value plus or minus and it needs to be uh, 60 cycles or 60 Hertz. Um, any deviation from that we can call that a perturbation. Oh that sounds horrible doesn't it? But uh, if the frequency is wrong, uh, if the amplitude is wrong, if there's garbage in the waveform and turns it into a deviant form, all of those things will change the amount of power being transferred and the part of the reason for that is um, it causes all kinds of uh, well harmonics I'll get to that in just a moment so any change from this nice clean sine wave will change the amount of power um, that we can transfer so that's why we want this nice clean sine wave for the maximum transfer and the best way actually the only way to create this clean or pure or natural sine wave you have to be really careful uh, reading through stuff uh, on the internet about this because uh, uh, different uh, authors use different words is it clean uh, is it pure is it a natural sine wave the only way you can generate a natural sine wave electrically is to use a mechanical AC generator and that's because um, what you do is you spin a um, coil of wire inside, that's the rotating thing, the rotor, inside a static or stator of uh, magnets. And as this rotor moves through the magnetic field, it will generate a little bit, a little bit more, 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 less, 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 less as it rotates. And it's very smooth. Um, that's where the um, 60 cycles coming out of the wall comes from is uh, some Edison or you know whatever your uh, power company is uh, has these spinning things that creates this nice smooth transition from no current up to maximum down to none back down to the other side the negative that's the natural sine wave the pure sine wave the clean sine wave the inverters, on the other hand, take direct current and convert it into a simulation or a clone or an imperfect version of a sine wave. Um, it's an imperfect depending on how close you look. Uh, the better inverters make something that looks very, very uh, close to a sine wave but if you look at it close enough you'll see some little tiny 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 little bumps in it so when somebody says um, the 3500 makes a clean or a pure or whatever um, yes I guess depending on how close you look hmm I don't know if I can look close enough with my uh, old scope but first things first inverters function convert DC into AC which we saw already. There are two forms, pure sign and modified or stepped or whatever you're used to looking at. The first one uh, we're going to look at is uh, this uh, uninterrupted power for typically a uh, home use. Um, I don't, I'm not sure where I got this thing. Well, I never mind. I do know where I got this thing. I just didn't want to tell you where I got it from. Um, so I'm going to use this as an example of uh, what kind of waveform and what kind of voltage you get out of um, an inverter that's in one of these things because if you look on the bottom the uh, output sine wave it tells you right there is not sinusoidal so that kind of tells you that it's going to be a step right how good this step is we'll have to see if I can find out on my <laughs> scope my old scope but even more importantly is it's telling you that the total harmonic distortion is 45% uh, and depending on the kind of load you stick on it, it could be a, a whole bunch worse than that. Um, so we'll have to explore that a little bit too. Beginning with what in the world is total harmonic distortion? Well, what is a harmonic? It's um, unwanted higher frequencies. Uh, in this case, we're 60 hertz. So, um, first level, second level, third level harmonics. 
the apparently the like the third and the fifth seem to be the worst and they create uh, lost or wasted power because um, the uh, systems that you're going to have plugged into this thing are looking for uh, you know 60 cycle not the uh, harmonics of 60 cycle now a couple places I've found some um, values that uh, I think I can trust I don't know as I said I don't do this for a living but commercial power um, around 2% or so uh, standard generators which you know AC outputs also around 2 a friend of mine said uh, he has one big old generator for his house and it's running you know, around 2% but a cheap inverter like the one we just looked at um, running above 25% um, and the matter of fact, the one we just looked at is uh, 40 something, not good at all. And then a quality inverter, um, the only place I could find one for the um, Harbor Freight 3500, it says less than 5%, but I don't have any way to check that because I don't have a correct meter. But I did find a video uh, that uh, shows uh, some of the. Um, THDs for uh, several different um, inverters. Um, I'll try to give you a reference for it uh, so you can go watch it too. That is if you're really a glutton for punishment. Uh -huh. And uh, here's another thing that kind of enters into this uh, THD. How nonlinear loads relate to the THD. This uh, uh, video is really pretty good. I, I liked it, which is why I recommend if you want to have your eyes bleed, you can go look at this one. Um, there's another one uh, where the guy has a meter that can uh, measure the uh, THD. Uh, you might want to watch that too. I'll try to give you the these two instead of you trying to copy them off the screen uh, in the info after I get this thing all done. So let us now with great trepidation venture into my high-tech lab where we're going to do some tests on that uh, uh, UPS to see uh, what kind of voltage it puts out, what kind of uh, signal it puts out. And if you really want to look at something interesting, check the uh, cyber power double conversion process. It's uh, a bit different than what we're doing here. A lot more redundancy, a lot more uh, dollars too. And based on the labeling of this unit, I'm expecting to see the little green step square things. It's trying to simulate or approximate the uh, sine wave. Won't know until I put my scope on it, but um, I watched a lot of videos and occasionally you can find one that shows kind of like this, a uh, little step square wave. Now let me move you over and do the same thing using my really, really primitive oscilloscope. Now what, what I have is two channels. The red channel right here is um, looking at what's coming out of the wall from wherever it's coming from. I have no idea where the electricity is coming from anymore. From here, we used to get it from, like I said, San Onofre otherwise known as SONGS, San Onofre Nuclear Generating, S-O-N-G-S. Um, so the red one is coming from commercial power. The blue one is coming from the uh, backup in the uh, normal through position, right? So basically they're both the same thing because it's the same power coming out of the wall as coming out of the, the, the um, inverter here. So what I'm going to do now is take this down and let's see what happens to the waveform when it's generated by the inverter function. Come on, get out of there. Bam! Well that sure doesn't look like a sine wave. Mm. It's not. Let's see if I can move this up and get it a little further up here. Now it's supposed to look like a step, uh, simulated, whatever term you happen to like. Um, I'm 
but it doesn't. And I think it's because um, there's so much distortion in this thing. It really should have looked more like that step thing where, you know, I have a down and then a kind of a little shoulder and then a down. Right? And then a, over like this. It should have gone over like this. Right? And then an up and then a little shoulder and an up. So that's effectively one cycle. If it were square, you could see it a little bit better. Now, I have no idea because I'm not an electronic engineer, electrical engineer. Don't even play one on TV. But I can tell you that this thing is supposed to be a step um, simulation and a pretty primitive one at that. Although not the most primitive one because I've seen a whole bunch of the really early ones that are just that square wave. Right? It's just a one on the up and then down yeah, and then up and like that. Well, this one at least is trying to do some steps. Not very well. Because I sure can't figure, you know, specifically what would cause this other than there's a bunch of harmonics. Well, I know there is because the uh, total harmonic distortion rating on this thing is over 40. So about 40% of the power on this is just in harmonics, which doesn't do the stuff you're plugging into it much good. So there's a lot of wasted uh, power in this. Does it make a difference? Well, I guess it depends on what you're hooking, hooking onto it. I don't know that I'd want to put anything really significant on here, but everything I've read says that you can get away with this. It works okay. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to turn that lamp on. And let's see what happens. Checking the AC over here. My probes are flopping around. Get this in here so I can see it again when I turn the lamp on. Okay, once again, I'm at uh, 114.5. So the blue signal is, a, you know, it's pretty close. 114.5. So now I'm going to turn the lamp on. Hmm. Well, that's giving me even more kind of junk. You can see it hitting going across the top. And once again, because I don't have the right tools to be able to do this, I can't tell what the total harmonic distortion is right now, but it's got to be pretty high. One of the uh, places I finally found said that uh, this particular kind of stepping, uh, you can't get below 25. Well, the machine is stamped for 40. So it's got to be at least 40 right now, probably higher. Once again, I don't know how bad this would be for whatever you plug in, but it doesn't hurt the light, that's, that's for sure. So there you go. That's what uh, a stepped waveform looks like after it's been uh, mangled by a, a whole bunch of distortion. I'm going to turn it off and let's see what happens now. Okay, went up, back up to 113, dropped to 110, back up to 113. You can tell that the um, the frequency is pretty close, although it's drifting a little bit. Um, you can tell it's pretty close because the blue and the red are about the same, right? Same width, and you're kind of almost locked in on the frequency. Like I said, drifting a little bit, but as ratty as that looks, I guess, you know, I think it's getting ready to... No, that's my voltmeter getting ready to shut off automatically. So there you go. That's the output from this particular... Um, inverter and it's pretty ratty looking So once we shove the DC into the inverter, um, this very complicated process takes place and I'm simplifying it massively. But basically what we're doing is 
simulating or actually creating the um, progressive levels of voltage uh, going up, 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 up to the peak and then down, 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 down like that. They're little blocks of uh, voltage uh, that creates the outline of the um, sinusoidal wave. I, I know this looks a little weird, but um, these little blocks are so close together that um, they kind of glue together. The blocks are kind of up at the end of each one of those lines so they could get glued together to uh, form the um, AC sine wave going out. Now they call it pure sine because certainly if you look at it on the scope like I have it looks like a pure sine wave but um, some of the videos that uh, I've watched where the, the guys have some really excellent scopes you can actually see these little things. There's gazillions of these little um, steps if you will. So it's still stepped, but it's stepped in such small, tiny, tiny increments that effectively it looks like a pure sine wave. And uh, I'll try to see that on my scope. I don't think I can catch it because my scope is ancient and it's, uh, anyway, I don't think it's going to work. But that's where we're going to go. I want to look at the output of the 3500 and I'd be willing to bet you when you see it, you'll think, hey, that's a pure sine. And that's what most people see. It's running at uh, 124 volts. Let me go in and uh, see what's at the end of this 50-foot uh, power cable. I'm going to close the garage door because the sun's shining in here. It's hard to see anything. Uh, and that's what the meter said on the machine. You can just barely hear it running. It is very quiet. All right, now let's um, move over here and see what kind of waveform is coming out of there. Now, once again, I've got the the blue line on AC reference coming out of the uh, wall. Let's see what the signal is coming out of the generator. The inverter actually. Beautiful. It's moving just a little bit, but it's definitely a sine wave output looking pretty good so we know the answer why is the total harmonic distortion 
rated at about less than five on this one, but it's uh, way, way up on this um, UPS. Because the UPS, let me look on the bottom again. I can't remember. I can't remember anything without looking. It's 45%. Uh, total harmonic distortion, 45%. Maximum single harmonic, 35%. Now, it took me forever to find a, a listing for less than 5% on this um, Harbor Freight inverter generator. I don't know why that was so hard to find, but um, I couldn't find it anyplace else after looking at so many uh, sources. Harbor Freight doesn't tell you at all, but it's right there. So, I think we found the answer. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Well, the question's been answered. For all the people that uh, watched all the way through, thanks. Uh, for all the people that just jumped right over to uh, the waveform here at the end, thanks for watching. Um, can you decide which one's better? If you're going to get one of these, which one are you going to get? You're going to get the inverter, uh, or are you going to get the open frame? The open frame certainly gives you a decent AC sine wave, but now we know the inverter does too. So what are you going to choose what's your what's your basis for the choice well the open frame it's definitely noisier but you can get uh, um, a lot more um, power out of the bigger ones you know get bigger and bigger and they're cheaper although the 799 is uh, ridiculous because you can just wait for a harbor freight coupon or you might look up this other thing because uh, Power Horse 3500 is the same size, shape, uh, virtually identical to the Harbor Freight Predator 3500. Uh, there was only a little bit difference in the face plate, um, and maybe it's even cheaper than the Harbor Freight one because it's virtually the same thing. I'd never heard of it before. Power Horse 3500. So what is your choice? Well, that's so personal. You just have to decide for yourself. But the fact I'm using mine for emergency power, if we have an earthquake or something like that, and I'm going to be running this thing right next to my house, about 50 feet away. And uh, you could hear how quiet it was when I closed the garage door. So that's been my choice, and I'll stick with it. Uh, now you know enough to know perhaps what you're going to choose. <laughs>